it's important. And fulfilling the roles of helpers in the battle, it doesn't mean that we try to usurp their authority and say, I'm as, the same as you and we're on the same level. No, you're not. I don't care if your gift is as grand as theirs. You're not on their level, not yet. When you graduate to that, you will have graduated to their level. But if you're a servant, you're not on their level. I don't care how grand your gift is. So don't be deceived. Operate within the role and the level God has given you, and He will promote you. Amen. Hey everybody, Pastor Irma here. This is the Helps Ministry Podcast where we train servant leaders and anyone serving and leading in the local church. Welcome to the show today. We have a holiday edition of the Helps Ministry Podcast designed to encourage you to be thankful. It's short, about 25 minutes. So without anything further, let's get to that training. Hey guys. Lesson 14, the next to the last lesson, I decided to go ahead and do that second set of power principles. I think it's worth imparting to you. And when you get a chance, you can watch it at any time in the natural progression of the lesson or at any other time that you want to be encouraged. And it's going to be good. So this is the next to the last lesson instead of the final one. It's lesson 14, and this is part two of uh, the armor bearer training course, which by now we have established that is the spirit of servanthood that we operate in, and the ministry of helps is where that fits. Armor bearing is an administration of the helps office, the helps ministry. The scripture that we quoted earlier in the course, it's the same spirit, but a different administration of the gifts of service. I was encouraging you to be faithful, be faithful. We live in a world, in a faithless world these days. Instead of a 20 or 30 year tenure in a career, uh, it's not that long anymore. It's very rare to find someone that has been on their job or in their career for 20 and 30 and 40 years. But that's what it used to be the norm. So our world is progressively getting worse and being faithful. But we, as the body of Christ, are called to be faithful. We are not only called, but called to model faithfulness to a faithless world. And that's why many times when couples fail in marriage, and especially if they're public figures, it's like the people are devastated. It's because you and faithfulness to each other as a couple, as a body of believers, a church, it's the same way with the church. If the church fails because of a moral failure of the pastor or the leadership, it hurts the body of Christ. And not only the body of Christ, but it hurts a faithless world who is looking to us to inspire faithfulness. They're looking to us to model God's faithfulness. They can believe that God can be faithful, the faithful life that you live. Remember, we are a living epistle. And so that is part of what we're writing about God in our life is his faithfulness. We're modeling his faithfulness, not so much ours because we fail. We fall way below level. We fall short of being faithful ourselves. But through Christ, we are faithful. And not only faithful, we're the righteousness of God and we can be faithful. So therefore we can model faithfulness to a faithless world who is looking to us to inspire them to faithfulness. Amen. So my objective in this book has been, and throughout part two is to speak from my heart and, and encourage you as a specific armor bearer to a leader, or even still those that feel called to that us uh, an assistant, to a specific leader or a support team to a specific leader. Uh, that's what part two of this book is all about. And therefore part two of this course has been about to inspire faithfulness in you, to impart a spirit of servanthood, the fire of God, the fire of God, which was up on me in writing it and is easily transferred to a faith believing heart. The spirit of, we called it the spirit of armor bearing. 
but really it's the Spirit of Christ who baptizes in fire, who baptizes in the Holy Ghost. It's the Spirit of Christ. That's the fire that you feel. Many people write in and, oh, they say, oh, it's a fi- we have a fire to serve. There's a fire upon us. And I instantly know it's been transferred to a believing heart. And that is what it's all about. I'm grateful in giving glory to God. It's all his. It belongs to him. It belongs to him. Many of the lessons that I presented were not only Barn and myself, but at us as a church family. We served on a team. We called ourselves the Three Amigos. It was a team of our leader, Barn, and myself. The start of it, it later birthed into and morphed into more, but it started with us uh, serving and supporting our leader and then our leadership team. A few of the lessons were taken from us as a team. I wanted to take the time to acknowledge that. I wanted to honor them that modeled um, faithfulness and even armor bearing to us. So in the ministry of an armor bearer, we examined three of the main ministry functions of an armor bearer. Our appointment as assistance from God. Remember how he appointed Oliab to uh, assist Bezaliel? He appointed him to assist him the same way he's appointed you. And he appointed me and he appointed Bar and he appointed our ministry leader back then. Our intercession, I wanted to impress upon you how important our intercession is for our leader. It's important. And fulfilling the roles of helpers in the battle. It doesn't mean that we try to usurp their authority and say, I'm as, the same as you and we're on the same level. No, you're not. I don't care if your gift is as grand as theirs. You're not on their level. Not yet. When you graduate to that, you will have graduated to their level. But if you're a servant, you're not on their level. I don't care how grand your gift is. So don't be deceived, my friend. Operate within the role and the level God has given you. And he will promote you. Amen? So we gain insight on how the development of character works through our trials and tribulations. God develops character in us. And then the acting as an anticipator of our leader's needs. That was beautiful. The gentle through the spirit that we're called to work in. The Gehazi factor, taking warning from the mistake Gehazi made, which one of them was, counted himself as equal as to the leader, knowing better than the prophet, the man of God, and decided he was going to go and do something that the prophet had already said that they weren't going to do. And um, he received the result of that, the consequence of that mistake. And then we even saw him later walking out forgiveness when he was serving the king. And then now, finally, faithfulness. I want to impress upon you the importance of faithfulness and God's call to faithfulness. He wants us to be faithful. Buddy Bell and his Ministry of Helps handbook, I love Buddy Bell. God called my faithfulness, my crowbar, he says, and then commanded me to use it. It's our crowbar too. Our faithfulness is the crowbar in our life. Pattern your service is the first section in this lesson. Abraham was called God's friend. And you know, he was called God's friend because he was a faithful man. He was a faithful man. And not all of what he said, but what he did. And what he continued to do, God called him faithful. And he said, I can trust Abraham. He's going to order his whole household to follow me as he follows me. And our things worth remembering about faithfulness. God remembers the faithfulness. Remember the scripture that I started out reading? God is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love toward his saints and toward his name. So God rewards. He's a rewarding God. He rewards our faithfulness in the small things. And then he gives us charge of more and he rewards us again and he keeps rewarding us he's a rewarding God now there is an enemy to faithfulness and it starts with Satan he is the ultimate enemy of faithfulness but there's some things some wrong choices that we want to guard against and one of them is offenses offenses is the bait of Satan 
and he wants to for us to get offended. He wants us to get offended over small things too. It doesn't have to be anything big, but over small things. He wants us offended because he knows offense hinders progress. Offense leads to harboring unforgiveness and then unforgiveness to bitterness and then to bitterness to a root of bitterness. And who knows where after that? Laziness and selfishness is an enemy to faithfulness. If we yield to the flesh, those are works of the flesh. If we yield to the flesh, we won't be faithful. We'll be uh, wishy-washy. Sometimes we'll show up, sometimes we won't. Or we'll show up late and care nothing about it. <laughs> that is an enemy to faithfulness. Impatience is an enemy to faith faithfulness. Impatience with the work of God, the faith of God, the God's timing. Uh, impatience with ourselves. Impatience with God, impatience with God's people, impatience, period, is an enemy to faithfulness in our life. And faithfulness cultivated is the final section, and I encourage you to develop loyalty. Be a loyal support to your leader. Persevere. Go through the storms with them. Don't bail out as soon as you, a little trouble arises, as soon as um, a misunderstanding arises. Don't bail out. Be faithful, persevere, love much, love much. I uh, recall, I'm doing better, I recall a season that um, many of my friends had fallen away from the Lord, many of them starting out about the same time I did, and they had what we call in the, among people of faith, backslidden. They went back. They let go of the Lord. They let loose of the plow, however you want to say it. And I, it scared me. I was going like, oh, my God, if they, if they can't hold on, how can I hold on? And you see that parallel right there, what it does for other people when they see you overcoming, when you become their living epistle and they're reading your life and they see faithfulness being modeled, they see longevity being modeled, they see faith in God being modeled. But back to my little story, I said, my God, how can I hold on if they can't hold on? I'll be next if I'm not careful. And so I was on my knees and crying out before God, and, and the Holy Spirit comforted me. He's our friend. Yes, he is. He's our friend. He said, many will come. Some will go. But you'll stay. You'll stay. And that settled my heart. I was I go like, oh, God, I'm so thankful that you would say that I, stop. I will stay because you know. You know it's all things, as Peter said. You know all things. So if he had saw him down the line that I was going to stay, I was going to stay. So that comforted my heart. And you, my friend, you're going to be faithful. You're going to be faithful. I see it by my spirit, by the Holy Spirit. You are going to be faithful. Have no fear. God's got you. God's got you. Uh-huh. Yep. And he don't lose who he has. No sirree. No sirree. And you're special. Besides that, he don't let go of his special ones. He says he has the godly reserved for himself. He preserves the faithful, the word of God says. He'll keep you. You're faithful. You've been faithful for years now. God is going to preserve you. The word of God says it. I believe it. Now you believe it and receive it. Yes, 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 yes. The enemy come talking that junk to you. You got the word of the Lord to give him. My God is preserving me because I'm faithful. And you are. You are. Hallelujah. Thank God for you. So over the years, I've talked to people, and I put a few examples in here, and listening to people, and a couple married over 40 years, their advice about how to stay faithful is keep a sense of humor. Laugh a lot at yourself and with others. If you make a mistake, pick yourself up. Forgive. Forgive others and forgive yourself. Keep going and keep laughing. That's what they said. A man in the ministry over 50 years. He said, serve God with all your heart. Doing this will build faithfulness in you. Realize the devil is a bad devil and God is a good God. Hallelujah. This knowledge will make you want to be faithful. Knowing the devil brings captivity and God brings restoration. And we'll let you know we have to be faithful. We have to be faithful. A couple in the ministry over 25 years said, 
Be responders, not reactors. Take it slow. If someone is rushing you and pressuring you to make a decision, it's probably not God. At the least, it's not his timing, so take it slow. The more we walk in God's timing, the more we will be faithful. That's what they said. And then finally, a woman who lived over 50 years. I learned not to take life so seriously. 80 years, I'm sorry, 50 years. Um, that's an accomplishment, but not as much as 80. So she's in her age, she was in her 80s at the time of this writing. She said, I learned not to take life so seriously. Have some fun along the way. God enjoys you better that way. He enjoys you better that way, and you enjoy him better that way. He really does delight in you, and there's no reason to be faithless. That's what she says. I close with a story. This guy, I enjoy him. He's in the Bible. He's impulsive. He reminds me of Varn. He reminds me of myself. He reminds me of some people I know. Impulsive. Thou art the Christ. And then the next meeting said, Jesus, you can't go to no cross. You can't die. We ain't got time for you to die now. You got to live so we can live and get out of this mess that we're in with the Romans taking over everything. I know you're going to lead us to victory. Peter is who I'm talking about. Peter is who I'm talking about. But you know, Peter messed up. He said it several times, guys, I'm going to go through some things. I'm going to even die, but have faith and believe. I'm paraphrasing now. And Peter impulsively, like he usually was, I'll die with you, Jesus. And he looked at Peter somberly. He said, Peter, this very night, you're going to deny me three times. Before the rooster crows in the morning, you're going to have denied me three times. And of course, Peter's response was, no, Lord, no. I'm going to do what I said. Or maybe his response was nothing because he hoped he could rise to the occasion. He didn't exactly know what lay ahead, although Jesus had plainly told them several times. But they couldn't quite grasp it in their heart. It's the same way with us. But the reason I'm talking about Peter is Jesus said, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. And his same desire is for us, my friend. As we serve, I don't care if you're serving at the lowest level, carrying a, a glass of water to your leader, carrying a glass of water to their child, or you're at the highest level and you're the pastor, you're the prophet, you're the apostle, the leader of your organization. Satan still desires to see, uh, sift you as we. But Jesus said, I pray for you that your faith would not fail you. And Jesus is still praying for us that our faith would not fail us, that we would make it through. And after we've made it through, that we would turn and strengthen our brethren and sisters, that we would turn and strengthen our brothers and sisters. That's our call. That's our call. All of us, whatever level, that we would turn and strengthen our brothers and sisters. And that's what this course has been about, to strengthen my brothers and sisters. You know, opportunity was given after my husband's passing away, whether I would remain faithful or not, whether I would continue the course. You know, I could have said, well, I'm headless now. My husband's gone. My head's gone. Why be a headless horseman? But no, I look to God who is my head. He always was my head. And the Bible tells me that he's my husband too now. My creator is my husband. So I'm leaning on him as my husband, husband. And you can too, whether you are married or not, he is your husband when you need him to be, amen? So I encourage you to be faithful. I encourage you to be faithful. So it is recorded that Peter made it through. His faith did not fail him. It was hard, oh yeah, it was hard. But he made it through and he turned and strengthened his brothers. Jesus called forth the leadership in him. And I'm calling forth the leadership in you, the servant leader. I'm calling it forth in you. That when you've made it through, whatever you're going through, perhaps you've already made it through. I'm calling you to turn and strengthen your brothers and sisters. 
Amen. Now my questions for thought this week are, have you counted the cost of your ministry? Have you counted the cost? Does your faith statement include, continue? Has your loyalty passed any test? I believe my friend it has. I believe it has. And that's it for this lesson. I will see you in the next video for the final lesson. And that's 10 more power principles of serving. Bye now. Hey, thanks for listening. This has been the Health Ministry Podcast with Pastor Irma. If you enjoyed the show, please support our sponsor, the Health Ministry School.com.